So I've got my crib notes here <laughs> without them I would probably just ramble and forget half of what I wanted to talk about. <clears throat> so I'm going to break this up into a few parts. I've got tips. I have an update um, about me, where I'm going, an update on the uh, on the coach itself and how it's been as a home and what's next. Um, so a few things I wanted to share uh, th that I've learned. I, some people call it Wally docking. It's a combination of boondocking and staying at a Walmart. Uh, and so what I typically do, because I work remotely and I am only able to travel on the weekends, is I will drive on Saturday, stay at a Walmart or Flying J or something similar, and then travel on Sunday and arrive at the destination um, for the week. Work during the week, and if I'm going to continue traveling, I will travel the, uh, the following weekend. So as I do that, I don't typically, uh, if I'm parking at anywhere, at, you know, if I'm Wally docking it or, or uh, parking at a Flying J, I don't do a full camp setup. The new air, in other words, put the slides out and the jacks down and, and whatnot. The new air is um, difficult to use, especially the 3343 floor plan, difficult to use with all the slides in. If you have, now you, you can use it. Uh, if you have guests staying uh, here, they won't be able to use it unless both slides are out, but the opposing slides are out. Uh, but the master bed is usable. The thing that I found that I kept forgetting to do and now I'm remembering to do is if when this slide is in, I have my cups and mugs and the and the cabinet to my right, to your left. They're not reachable when the slide is in. So what I've done is I put a mug and a cup in the kitchen so that I can access them without having to uh, cycle this slide. What I tend to do, if I can, is put the full wall slide out because that opens up a lot more since it's a full wall slide, gives me some breathing room um, and allows, and it doesn't go out that far. It's not a particularly deep slide out. So I'll try to park in such a way that putting, uh, putting the slide out won't cause problems. So that's my first tip is think about if you're gonna be Wally, Wally docking or something of that nature and, and you aren't putting your slides out Make sure you're going to be able to access what you want to be able to access while, you know, in that condition. So for me, it was just the, the cup and the mug. For you and, and, and your particular coach, it'll likely be different. Um, <laughs> the other thing that has um, come up for some reason all of a sudden within the last few months has been those little flat lithium-ion batteries have all gone dead on me. <laughs> it's It's been a couple of years in some cases that I've owned this sort of stuff, and depending on you know the the device and the and the quality of the batteries you buy you know one to two years tends to be it so you you if you saw my previous video the Gerard control that takes two um, of the 20 the CR2430 batteries as does the handheld remotes so there's a total of three um, of those and so what I've what I've done here is I've kept a list on my phone of the kinds of batteries that I want to make sure I have on hand so now I have spares of all of these uh, the most common battery in general for that type, that flat type, is the 2032, the CR2032. So the, the key fobs um, use it. For me, I have the Level Mate Pro um, that uses it. I have a digital caliper uh, that uses it. My uh, remote instant or my instant read thermometer for cooking uses it. And I'm sure I'm forgetting other things. It's a very common thing that I can easily find in stores. Um, the other ones are harder to find in stores. Walmart tends to carry them, uh, but uh, not as much. The third one that I have are these CR1632s. That's for the easy, easy Tire TPMS that I'm using. So each little remote that's on my tires, and I have a total of 10 uses those, uh, and they all died um, after about a year. So I had to go and replace those. So I, I did a big Amazon order for those, and I've got spares. So that's it for my tips. We'll move on um, to sort of an update on uh, on me in general and, and, and from uh, what's been happening in the past. So like I said, I, I work remotely. I'm full-timing now. It's been 13 months since I've been full-timing. And uh, what I did last winter was I stayed in, in Florida, specifically uh, mostly in the Florida, Florida Keys. That was about four months, December to April. I moved um, north. Uh, in, I stayed in Florida all the way through sometime in June before I exited and really started to 
haul it up the East Coast um, to Connecticut. But uh, during that time, there was um, long international travel involved, which is part of the reason for, for my absence. Uh, and when I got back in June, it was uh, time to time to vacate for it. It was getting hot. Uh, so I made a beeline for Connecticut and uh, I, I parked in my, my parents' driveway for, uh, for a few weeks, moved to the campground in Massachusetts. I'm from Massachusetts. I work, uh, in my office is in the Boston area and I uh, used that opportunity to, to go see my colleagues on a somewhat regular basis. I'd commute in two or three times a week and I stayed, um, I kept doing that until uh, October, at which case I went back and parked at my parents' driveway for a couple of three weeks uh, and w attended and participated in my sister's wedding. <laughs> so she's she's now married, uh, and uh, and after that was all done and things quieted down, a week and a half later, uh, it was time to go somewhere for the winter, and I debated Florida again. I debated some of the other popular areas and I've made a decision and uh, I will keep that a surprise for now. Uh, it is west, that is what I will share for now, and it involves going through New Mexico and that is what is up next for me. That's where I'm going to start traveling towards uh, next week. I might go straight to New Mexico, I may go down to, uh, to Texas first. I have uh, a desire to go see National Indoor RV Centers just to see it. Um, there's been such good talk about it about it from a not only a sales perspective but service and they also store uh, your motorhome um, in, indoors as well so I kind of want to check that out I'll probably end up buying something this is not a good idea <laughs> so uh, so I often get asked this particularly because I the first part of my channel is documenting all the problems that I had with the new air in particular I don't know why I didn't think about this when I first bought it, you know, I, one of the things I tend not to do is buy uh, a new car, a car that is the first year of a, of a model. And the new Air was the first model uh, in 2018 and the first time they started producing it. And I got it on the early side and I paid for it. Now, all RVs from, you know, this is my first that I've owned. Um, so I can't speak from experience. I can only speak through what I've seen in the forums um, and some of the responses to my posts about how many problems I've had. Um, the response tends to be all RVs have uh, teething problems when they're brand new. So, but uh, from what I've been able to gather, I've had more than my fair share um, for this RV. And so uh, some of the questions I get asked are around, how is it now? Are you still having problems with it? Some people wonder, uh, since I've been away from the channel, like, do I even own it anymore? Um, so, as a home, uh, you know, when I'm uh, stationary, um, it's been a good home for me. I don't miss my house. I, I'm shocked that it's been over a year now, and I really don't miss it. Um, it's comfortable in here. That's one of the reasons I bought the new air was was because it was luxury class. It was, uh, sh you know, it was shorter. So, being my first RV, it was scary to try and buy something that was maybe 45 feet uh, and uh, and um, so you know the things like especially when it's cold out the heated floors are I, I cannot that's just I don't know how to describe it other than awesome I absolutely love that makes it, it it makes being in the in here just really nice um, and a really good experience um, the, the other thing that I made, you know, I wanted to benefit from was I've got the washer and dryer in there, so I'm not uh, doing laundry runs and things like that. The shower is nice, the unlimited hot water, uh, you know, and that sort of thing. And it's it's well insulated, so it's comfortable to be in, both from a temperature perspective and even a noise pers perspective. Uh, it doesn't, it's not as noisy in here if there's noise outside, so uh, it's been really good that way. Um, the only problem I, from a home perspective, it's not a problem with the unit. Uh, per se, is that I, I've come to hate my office setup. Uh, it is the dining room, <laughs> and it's not particularly comfortable to, to be there, um, you know, for 48 plus hours a week. In fact, the, the furniture, the, the foam is, has, is, is compressed and uh, no longer comfortable to sit on. So I got to figure something out with that, but that's my only, you know, really complaint, if you will. 
I had a couple other issues with it I'll, that I'll be talking about at some point. Nothing major. Um, and, you know, driving-wise, it's been fine, too. I can't think of any problems that I've had with it. I've got over 14,000 miles on it now, so that's been good. Um, and I, I, I don't know if I ever mentioned this before, but I've now had a couple of um, opportunities to do uh, U-turns uh, connected, connected to the Jeep. Um, I'm always watching the Jeep because the, the tow bar can really get really close to hitting the uh, to the to hitting the back bumper uh, of the of the new air if you're executing a, a turn that tightly. Um, I I don't know that I've done a full cut U turn 180 degrees. It, it, uh, in that case, it's quite possible you would hit, but I've always been keeping my eye on it, so I don't tend to do a full cut 180 degrees. Even so, I've been able to pull off U-turns in three lanes of traffic. So if I'm, uh, you know, very a classic situation is a two-lane divided highway, um, and um, you're you're in the actually in the third lane uh, to do a left turn, and there's two lanes going the other direction. You can U-turn <laughs> in the new air uh, in that situation, which has been uh, pretty cool. So. Uh, However, I do have a U-turn debacle, if you will, uh, that I will uh, talk about. It actually occurred on my way here, where I took a wrong uh, took a wrong turn and ended up in a basically a dead end situation, <laughs> and so I had to disconnect the the Jeep and and all that happy stuff. So that was fine. We'll, I'll uh, I'll try to get a video of where I was in the situation. I, the the grade that I had to go down to when I screwed up and the grade that I had to come back up was pretty crazy. <laughs> so that that's that was fun so what's next um i've got uh I've, had, I've made a few updates to the interior uh nothing major but uh they've all been good uh, to do and have helped uh, make it more comfortable uh, especially uh, while i'm uh, boondocking or wally docking the jeep um wrangler two-door wrangler uh, it takes a special kind of person to like that and i came to really hate it when I was commuting back when I was in the Boston area, uh, you know, I was doing 70 miles a day, at an hour each way when I did commute two or three times uh, a week. And I did that, I really started to hate it at that point. I didn't realize for whatever reason when I bought it that you don't have to get a manual uh, transmission in order to do four wheel down towing. Um, auto I, I mean, I enjoyed driving stick, but not in traffic. Um, automatic probably would have, uh, an automatic transmission probably would have helped my situation there. And I did install a new radio unit um, with CarPlay so that I had reasonable GPS um, using my iPhone and, and that sort of thing. That That's kind of helped it. Um, but the fact that you can basically easily break into it, um, which has happened to me, um, you know, if it's been broken into at, at an airport parking lot because you just unzip the soft top and you're in. Um, the, the rough ride, it's a really weak, even though it's a V6, it's really weak um, and uh, really hits a wall aerodynamically on the highway and you get really bad gas mileage. I mean, these are all kind of well-known things uh, for a Wrangler. And getting the, you know, taking the top off and putting it back on was enough of a hassle that I rarely did it. So long-winded, um, for me, I don't like the Wrangler and I've, I, it, I've come to actually hate it. <laughs> um, so... I've got a vehicle change um, coming, which I'll be talking about as we we get closer. That probably won't happen until sometime in the December time frame. Um, and the December time frame is when I uh, plan to be planted at uh, my winter location for a few months. So stay tuned for that. Um, and that is my crib notes. So feel free to ask questions. I'm happy to answer them. I enjoy answering comments. I will have a better way to communicate with me via uh, uh, just keyboard uh, Twitter Instagram something like that's gonna be coming I'm just trying to figure out um, really a, the name of the channel to match up with the name of the YouTube channel um, in such a way that's not going to cause a lot of confusion so anyway uh, stay tuned for that I'll be posting about that and again let me know if you've got questions thank you so much for watching